Today's video is about soldering surface mount components such as resistors and ICs. So let's move on. I'll solder a chip component. When soldering a chip component, the suitable solder wire diameter would be about 0.4 millimeter. It depends on the size of the component though. When the solder wire is thin, the amount of applied solder is easier to control. I think a D-type iron tip is most suitable. I'm going to solder a 2012 size chip component. Since a chip component is very small, you need to tack it down first. Apply solder to one of the two pads. It's better to apply solder to the one on the large mass copper foil first. Soldering on a large copper foil is difficult because more heat escapes from a larger copper foil. If you finish the difficult soldering in the first step, later steps will be easier. Apply flux to the solder. Hold the component with the tweezers. Slide the component on the printed circuit board to the soldered pad. You must slide the component on the circuit board so the component will not be lifted while soldering. Lifted components can cause defects later. The position wasn't good. I'll resolder. If you resolder many times, the flux will be insufficient. Add some flux in that case. The component is tacked down successfully. Chip components are small, so they heat up easily. If you apply the iron too long, the component may be damaged, so be careful. I'll solder the other side. Apply flux to the pad. I'm using a D-type iron tip. In the case of a D-type tip, apply solder to the side that touches the pad, then solder. Since I applied the solder directly to the tip, the flux will evaporate. But it's okay because I applied flux to the printed circuit board beforehand. The other side where I soldered earlier was only for tacking down, so I'll solder again. Apply flux. You don't have to apply solder to the iron tip because you can reuse the solder on the pad. Soldering is now complete. I will try using a little thinner version of D-type tip. Since the heat capacity of the tip is small, the tip temperature easily drops, which makes soldering a bit more difficult. Please note that even if the component is small, choosing a thin tip may make soldering difficult. The soldering method is basically the same. Tack down the component. Apply flux to the other side of the component and solder. The copper foil on this side is small, so soldering is easier. Apply flux to the tack down part and resolder. When soldering on a large copper foil like this one, the temperature of the tip easily drops, so soldering is difficult. It takes time to melt solder. I'll use a microscope to check the result of the soldering. Observing from 360 degree angles, the shape of the fillet doesn't look bad. It's within the acceptable criteria, but the amount of solder is a little too much, especially on the right side. The component isn't lifted. If the component is lifted, it becomes vulnerable to vibration. Cracking may occur in the solder or the component itself. Be sure to fix lifted components. I also soldered even smaller components. 1608 and 1005 size chips. The method is the same. Tack down one side, apply flux to the other, then solder. When the component is too small, change the tip to a slightly smaller one. Apply flux to the side tack down earlier and resolder. Soldering is complete. Soldering small components is difficult. For example, when holding components with tweezers, if you pinch a small multi-layer ceramic capacitor forcefully, it will break. You need to control power delicately. Soldering a 1005 size chip is extremely difficult. It's difficult to align the positions and adjust the amount of solder. When soldering chip components, lack of solder wouldn't be a problem. On the contrary, applying too much solder is the cause of many troubles. If you have applied too much solder, use a solder wick. Remove the excess solder. Apply flux and resolder. Make sure you don't apply too much solder here. So far, I've soldered extremely small chip components. The cable connected to the soldering iron is so soft and flexible, I was able to perform a very delicate work without being bothered by the cable. If you use a regular soldering iron, I don't think you can perform such extremely delicate work. I wouldn't say it's impossible, but the accuracy will definitely be lost. What's more, this soldering station comes with a thin iron that you can hold like a pencil. That makes soldering even easier. Next, I'm going to solder IC components. I'll try soldering two types of ICs, one whose pitch is coarse and the other whose pitch is fine. First, let's start with the one with coarse pitch. 
I'm going to try two methods. First method is to tack down the component by soldering. Apply solder to the pad. Adjust the position and tack down the component. There you go. Then apply some flux to make soldering easier. Just a small amount of flux is fine. Use a C-type iron tip. It's a bit thick, but I think it's the best for soldering this. When soldering ICs, do not choose thin tips just because the pins are thin. It makes soldering even more difficult because then tips easily lose heat. A large iron tip has a high heat capacity, so the temperature doesn't drop while soldering. You can solder easily. Do the same on the other side. When soldering the other side, slide the iron from the pad that was soldered in the first step. This makes it easier to control the amount of solder so you can prevent solder bridging. Put the solder wire here and apply the tip. Slide the tip like this to solder the rest. Done. The component is covered with flux, so use flux remover to clean the component. These are the joints I soldered. Pretty neatly done. The fillets have a nice shape. The IC pins are well soldered. The back of the pins are fully covered with solder. Next, I'm going to solder a fine pitch surface mount IC. As you can see, the pins are very thin. They can easily bend depending on how you hold the component. When you pick it up, it's better to hold the package of the IC using tweezers. Align the circle mark on the printed circuit board with the circle mark on the IC. This IC has two circle marks. Check the data sheet to make sure which circle is to be aligned. Use masking tape to position the IC. Positioning is the most important part of soldering. If you solder without aligning properly, correcting the position will be extremely difficult. Position the component, then tack down the component. Apply flux to the area you want to solder, and then apply solder. It's better not to touch the pins with the iron tip. I see pins are soft, so they might bend if you apply the iron tip to the pins, especially the ones at the corners. Apply the iron tip to the copper foil and melt solder. The heat is transmitted to the pins and the pins are soldered. Tacking down is done. Apply flux to the other pins. The amount of solder is this much. Pay attention to how long I apply the tip and how fast I move it. Can you see the solder flowing on the parts of the pins where they're attached to the package? You can solder well if you move the iron tip at this speed. Let's try soldering an IC with many pins. Apply flux and supply solder to the tip. Then solder two or three pins at a time like I did earlier. You can see the solder is flowing on the parts of the pins where they're attached to the package. I used a D-type iron tip to solder ICs. If you use a D-type tip, you can solder two or three pins at a time. Check that the solder is on the IC pins, then move on to the next pins. Repeat it till you reach the last pin. I'll try using a C-type as well. With this tip, I'll slide the tip without stopping. It feels like a C-type tip tends to make bridges more than a D-type tip. The pitch of this IC is quite fine, so bridges are easily made. There are two ways to fix solder bridges. One is to add more solder and put the excess solder on the iron tip. The other is to use a solder wick. Using a solder wick is the more certain way to fix bridges. Let's check the finished look. The amount of solder is just right. Therefore, beautifully shaped fillets are formed. Solder is not only on the front side, but also on the back side of the pins to form fillets. I was able to solder beautifully. Now let's have a look at how you can use this K-type tip. When using a K-type tip, I feel that you have to turn the tip so the blade is parallel to the PCB to transmit the heat well. If you do that, you can solder quite neatly like this. I wonder if it's better to have the sharp edge in front or the edge with larger angle in front. 